Bum -ba -da -dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, teaching you how to play banjo guitar. This week is Mandolin Week. One of my most popular series ever on Mandolin is one called Exploring Ballad Backup. And that's where we take a slower song and we learn how to play really tasty, um, rhythmic arpeggios and licks behind it. You know, the truth is, not everything's fast. Matter of fact, it's... I like playing the slow stuff more and, and making it really, really pretty. Uh, so this time we're going to concentrate on ballads in the key of E, uh, which pre uh, presents its own unique challenges. But this is a really common key, especially for girl singers, too. So we're going to look at three or four different ways that we can approach this rhythm and then also talk about different chord shapes and voicings that we can use and which notes are legal, which ones aren't, that type of thing. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjovanclark.com. Join as a Gold Peak member. Have access to this lesson, hundreds of others, including the other lessons in this series of mandolin ballad backup. Let's get started. We're talking key of E today. Maybe you're familiar with the key of E. Maybe you're not, but you're going to be by the time we get finished. Let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to identify the major chords that we're going to play in the key of E. You know, technically, you can have all kinds of chords in any key, but we're going to look at the most common ones. That's your one, four, and five chord. Okay, you've heard country songs described as three chords in the truth. There's a reason for that, because we have three chords that are the most common, and in the key of E, that's E, and then your four chord would be an A, and then your five chord is a B, and very often it's a B7, and we'll talk about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a progression that stops through each one of those chords. We're gonna do it over and over again so that we can compare different ideas of how to play behind it. We're gonna start out with just some syncopated rolls. Okay, you heard those just. Okay, put a little bit of a banjo influence in there, but it doesn't sound like a banjo. It's just using some of those tools. Uh, then we're going to add scales, which is really cool because uh, it's going to give a, a bit more of a variance. It's, it's going to keep it from being too monotonous. So we'll play some rolls and then connect them with scales. And then we're going to get into a, a hammers and slides just to add a bit of complexity into what we play. Um, and then what we'll see at the end is that we can mix it all up and create some outstanding backup tracks uh, for singers or, or even for, um, for instrumentals too. Okay, And this works uh, great in our solo playing and just playing fills in general. Now the first one we're going to look at is what I call a syncopated roll. And what we need to talk about first is what do our chords look like um, in the key of E. The way that I'm going to have this progression set up is just a, a typical progression where we have two measures of E, then two measures of A. You see it switched to an A chord halfway through that line. And then on the next line we'll have two measures of B, and then we'll go back to two measures of E. And then we'll just keep repeating that. Of course for your song, I don't know what the progression is going to be. It might be this one, might be a different one. The point is not to apply exactly what you learn here to every song, because it wouldn't line up with the chords, but rather learn what we do over the E chord. Learn what we do over the A and the B chord, and then take it to your other songs and apply it to, uh, to that chord change as well. So we have all kinds of different chord shapes, okay, for E, uh, some various ones. We've got uh, open ones, okay, but I just want to identify a few. One of the most basic ones would be to take a D chord, you know this open D chord, okay, and E is one whole step above that, two frets above that. So if we took those two fingers and we just moved them up two frets, then we'd be over an E chord. Problem is the open strings also need to move up with it. So what we end up doing is barring those middle two strings with our index finger. And I, I kind of point back towards my right shoulder with that. And then I play these two strings just like I was playing the D chord. So here's E, and I'm gonna move it up and bar. There's our E. Now, the cool thing is, is that we don't always have to play that full chord. Matter of fact, we hardly ever do. And I, this is kind of point number one, is that when you're playing this ballad backup, we don't have to play full chord shapes most of the time. We just have to play the notes that we want to play. So let's just worry about the first three strings. So I'm gonna bar the middle two strings on the second fret. Again, I'm not barring that going straight up. That's very uncomfortable. I'm pointing it back toward my right shoulder, flattening out that index finger. If you want, if your fingers are small enough to play with two fingers, then have at it. I'm able to bar it. And then I'm going to, with my ring finger, grab this third fret up here, or fourth fret. Now, that's only half the battle, because next we're going to syncopate some rolls. And if you're not used to counting tab, or counting music, then this looks quite strange to you, what we're looking at here in this first line. Uh, but this is a very, very pretty pattern. It sounds like this. Now, 
Now, the reason why I'm doing syncopated rolls is that if we played a note for every eighth note that we possibly could, it would get old. It would sound like this. Which sounds okay, right? But it's too much mandolin for a lot of scenarios. So we want to create space. As a matter of fact, it's the space is maybe more important than the notes that we play. There's a saying in Nashville, it's, it's not the notes that you play here that get you hired, it's the notes that you don't play. And I would have to uh, agree with that. So we're going to create some space. So let's make that chord progression or that chord position. And the first measure there, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and. Can you just play that? And then that's going to hold over into that next measure. And then we're doing this backward roll where we pause on that first string each time. So we roll through it forward, first of all. Then once we get there to this note, we pause there and start doing backward rolls. That sounds so pretty. Then we're just going to switch to an A chord. Okay, so I'm going to leave, actually lay my finger down here. You don't have to, you can switch, but I'm just going to move my other fingers out. You can use your last two fingers or your middle two for an A chord, partial A chord, which is two, four, and five. Okay, so the, the two of them together. We're going to slide down to a B chord. Now, one of the ways that we're going to get a B chord is, let me show you something um, uh, really cool. A, a, a B chord is f uh, five steps above an E chord. So uh, we're going a fifth above. Okay. So we're going to move everything just down toward the floor, one string. Boop. So this finger is going to drop off. And now we're going to bar those two. And I'm going to do it first uh, fret here with my index finger. And then I'm going to bar the second frets there with my middle finger. That's the sound that we get. Kind of difficult because we're close to the nut. So you may not be able to bar. You might just play it with three fingers. Then back to our E. Okay. So let, let me talk to you about a couple of very practical things regarding this before we move on to the next one. Um, we don't have to do that backward roll. Uh, you could instead do a syncopated forward roll. It would sound like this. You can do any kind of combination that you want. You also have don't have to do those chord shapes. So we're going to look at some more voicings here in a little bit. So you can take the voicings, the other chord shapes that we're going to learn for an A, an E, and a B, and you can apply the same pick pattern to those as well. Okay? If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, come on over to the website. You can watch the rest of this 30-minute lesson as well as get the uh, rhythm track MP3s to practice along and download the tabs. For you, those of you already here on the website, just scroll down. You have the rest of what you need. Just click on the next video segment.